Um, just because I've got a couple of tricks that I want to show. Cool tricks. Um, so my Olica, as I was saying earlier, earthenware generally tends to be, I tend to have my clears quite thin, but this is pretty thick for a glaze. The way I like to check is um, looking at the wrinkles of my fingers or around my cuticles. If your hand is wet, you're not going to be able to gauge this very well because it's not going to, your, your hand isn't going to take the glaze in the same way. But you see how it's just breaking and I can see the edges of my, my knuckles, mm -hmm. my hands that are getting progressively more wrinkled as I get older. You old lady. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, another thing I like to do is just have a bucket of water in the sink. It saves me having to run the tap all the time if I just need to rinse my hands or whatever. And um, I don't know if anybody, if I told the story already, but when I worked in Montana for four years, we had no running water in the studio. So I got really used to what you can do without running water and just how clean you can get things. So um, it's still something that I'm really conscious of is the use of water from living out there. So what I'm going to do in order to glaze this is I'm going to pour the inside first and pour it out, and then I'm going to dip it right away. The key with my olica is um, to, like, I wouldn't worry about each drip. Like, that kind of blends in, and I can go out and get rid of those afterwards. But um, as with anything, once I get liquid on the inside, it's going to already start absorbing moisture because glaze, of course, in my kind of... Uh, child definition is it's powdered glass suspended in water. The water gets absorbed by our pots, the glass sticks, we put it in the kiln and it melts, right? So if I glaze the inside, this pot's already started to absorb moisture. It's not going to absorb as much glaze on the outside. So what I don't want to do is glaze all my insides and then come back and glaze all my outsides because my outsides will get significantly less glaze than my insides. With my olica, you want to have that nice solid coating, right? So we want to be sure to do it right one after the other. Um, over the years, I've and be aware of this as you're glazing. Like I, I know how I'm going to handle pots when I glaze them. So it's created some certain decisions when I'm making pots. So keep in mind as you're glazing, like look at your foot rings. Does that give you a secure grip? Or think <coughs> about you know how your mug is. Like maybe it's small enough that you can comfortably reach around this way. And actually, since this is small enough, I'll go ahead and demo that with this one. But, but think about how you grasp pots and maybe what is giving you some problems when you're glazing so that the next time you go to make a form like that, you can have that inform those decisions. Does that make sense? Yeah. So always kind of that reciprocal relationship. So I'm going to go ahead and pour this inside. So I've just cupped it. Um, upright in my hand so that I can easily come around oops, come around this way and that'll be more obvious when I start so I tilt away from me first and I'm spinning the pot the whole time to get the coverage even on the inside spanning it from the rim and my foot and I'm just gonna push down and unfortunately this bucket isn't deep enough so we've got some left at the bottom that's fine it's a rustic <coughs> Italian pitcher. <laughs> so where my finger was, you see that hasn't dried yet, and I've got glaze on my fingertip, I can just come back and touch that up. That's all I need to do, okay? We don't need to mess with this at all anymore. It's done. It's ready to go. Um, yeah. So that was that. Um, so just very fast, very straightforward. Um, I feel like I was going to say something, and I forgot what it was. Never mind. So, um, oh, I know what it was. I don't know if this is going to fit in here. Might just. So with this plate, I'm going to do something similar in the sense that I, I hold with the foot ring and then two fingers on the rim like this. That's it. And I'm going to go into my bucket. I'm probably going to have to tilt the bucket on its side. I'm going to come into the bucket. I'm going to swish it from side to side so that there's no pocket of air. That's what I was going to say. So because I came down into the bucket, there's a vacuum on the inside, so the glaze isn't coming up inside the object. Okay? So you just want to enter 
as flat, as level as possible so you don't get too much glaze back on the inside. So I'm going to come in, switch it from side to side so that there is no pocket, and then come back out and hold it this way. As I'm holding it this way, gravity, naturally, the water is going to start collecting here, the moisture, and it's going to dry here first. And you can watch the sheen disappear, and then I can touch this without marring the glaze surface and come back and touch up where my fingers were on the bottom. Okay. So just give it a couple of shakes to let that come down. And you can see how the sheen is starting to disappear here on this top edge. And I'm just, you know, there's a little bit of anxiety when I glaze, you know, because it's a matter of timing and rhythm and movement. But at the same time, you just want to um, not freak out. <laughs> like if something didn't work, if I missed a spot on this, for example, I'm not going to put this back in the bucket because I don't want to oversaturate it or get too much glaze on it. I'll try and solve it in some other way. So that was just scooping some glaze with my hand and just touching up that area. And I'm not going to worry about my thumbprint on the foot ring because I don't, you know, I'm going to clean that up anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's that. Um, so this one is uh, going to be a problem because it's, we don't have enough glaze, right? And the same thing with the bowl. So I'm going to do this one first, and I'll start it much the same as the other ones. And Jean, I'm not sure you're going to have a real challenge with those big ones because you have no way to comfortably grab them to be able to fill them and pour them out. Yeah. Um, it's, well, I'm not going to glaze this. Well, so that's going to help. Um, one thing you could maybe do when we have more glaze is using the red bucket or the, the yellow bucket, um, putting, uh, rolling it mm -hmm. so it does the inside and the outside at the same time. Okay. Does that make sense yeah, to everybody? Yeah, I can hold it by this. Yeah, and the foot and then just roll it. Mm -hmm. so that might be the solution for that. What I should have done is um, either kept the lid of the bucket here or put newspaper down because I don't want to get um, iron things. I don't want to get the red clay inside the white glaze. Right? So, um, just grab that. I will take that down. So, do you not have a problem with putting your hands in the, in the glazes? I don't. Um, glazes that tend to be problematic are um, manganese is directly absorbed in the skin, which is a coloring oxide, and it's black, and it's used in a lot of black glazes or luster um, glazes. Uh, soda ash can be very corrosive, or any wood ash glazes can be painful. So if you've done a lot of cone tan, especially wood firing, you've experienced those glazes, and yes, those over time can definitely hurt your skin. I don't have a problem with earthenware glazes. Um, but good question. So I'm just going to do this the same as I did the other one. Because it's taller, I'm trying to roll a little bit more slowly also because I have that really strong shoulder in there, so I wanted to go oh, I don't need that yet. more slowly so that I didn't avoid that. Um, to do the handle, I'm going to just pour on the handle itself so that I get both sides of it. And then to do this, notice how I've turned my wrist, turned my arm, so that I can move it at a steady pace all the way around. So just really taking my time, and let's take note of where these overlaps are and where some of the thicknesses are, and really see how that, you know, how that affects it. Because I have it right there on mm -hmm. the hand. Oof, I'll get that with a brush. Okay. Yeah, because I don't want to come over it Fine. again with the whole yeah. thing. But thank you for pointing that out. So um, tonight, you know, what would be great is um, if you have a piece that you well, yeah, if you have a piece that you pieces that you don't like as much. <laughs> um, Go ahead and glaze those, and we'll decorate them on Thursday when I pull out all the decorating materials and go over those techniques. And we'll load that in the kiln Thursday night, and that'll be out on Saturday. I know not all of you will be able to come in, but we'll have class on Saturday also. So we'll have that information back. That's what's so great about doing earthenware is we get all this information back so that then you can...